Hickok 45, and as you know, you're looking somewhere at a Colt Frontier six shooter. Looks to me like there's a couple of them. Well, sorta, and sorta not. We will explain. You know you can rely on me to explain uh, to a fault, right? <laughs> Here is the Colt Frontier six shooter. All right, the other one is a new one. These are basically the same firearms and there's uh, about 129, 28 years separating the two, however. So one has seen a little use and the other has really seen just a little use <laughs> in a literal sense. But that's what this is about. And before I shot it, lots of times we just start shooting right away. Well, this thing is so old, it was made in 1887 that we need to shoot black powder cartridges in it. And that's what you're looking at right there. Okay. So I thought I'd show you a little bit about it before we actually take a shot. All right. This vintage Colt, that's really a single action. It's not necessarily specifically an army, you know, Colt single action army because it's a 44 and that was never really adopted by the army. But most of us tend to think of all these as single action armies, cult single action armies, all right? But technically it's not. And that's why they gave it the name, which you can't really see. It's etched on the barrel. I can barely see it with a magnifying glass. I can see it even better, but it says on the barrel, there's a, an etching panel there, as they call it. If you, it's a really just about worn off because it, it was just not very deep to begin with. You know, it was just etched on the barrels the early years. And it says Colt Frontier six shooter on that. And that, of course, helps verify what it is. The barrel wasn't changed, changed out or anything. So uh, that's what that is. And that was made in 1887, has ivory grips. No elephants were harmed in the making of this video. Those grips are probably as old as the firearm or mighty, mighty close because they are very, very old. Somebody, in fact, inlaid a quarter there, dated 1886. And I, I don't know why they put an 1886 in there instead of an 1887, because the serial number dates this revolver to 1887. We won't quibble, okay? So one thing I was going to show you before I, oh, I got kangaroo hair all over it. That actually is a kangaroo skin. Steve Lee brought us from Australia uh, when he was up. But uh, we thought just, you know, the best skin for such a fine revolver, two fine revolvers and some fine knives. Brought out all the stuff that has stag handles or ivory and there's just something special about ivory and, and uh, which is not as legal these days, of course, for some good reasons, right? We don't want people running around killing elephants just so they can you know, get material to, to carve something. Uh, but this goes way back over a hundred years ago. Uh, but stag is just, just makes a, a nice handle down there, a grip beautiful stuff most people really really like it maybe you don't maybe you like prefer wood or maybe you'd prefer something from one of the laminate trees we grow here on the place but uh but they're pretty i think this is goes back to the black powder frame and before it gets dirty because oh man it gets so so dirty i fired a couple of shots uh, a little bit ago and had to do some cleaning on it it is a job uh it seemed like more than i don't know uh, i used to shoot a lot of black powder cartridges in 45 and cowboy action shooting and it's this thing seems to get dirtier than even those did for some reason but anyway this is uh the black powder frame you see the screw there so it comes down differently you got to take that screw out before you can get the base pin out okay and that was changed in the uh, 1890s to uh that traverse pin that goes across so it's so one of the things i wanted to show you in the video which uh, i thought we'll just start with that because while they're clean and how they come apart, all right? And you're pretty familiar with this problem. I'm not gonna take it down totally, just gonna field strip it, all right? There's your bushing, your cylinder, and, and there it is. Colt, single action, basically, even though it's called a Frontier Six Shooter, all right? There was that one. And then the difference is on the new one, this is the Davy Colt, as you know, if you've seen the video, I hope you have, where, you know, now my grandson, my son, See, my grandson's name is Davey. I forget my son's name. Something like John, maybe. I don't know. Uh, 
has one and, and I have one. They're all uh, consecutive serial numbers. If you haven't seen that video, take a look at it. You'll see all three of these firearms. But this is a new one. Wow, that kangaroo is shedding. We must have got him in the shedding season here, didn't we? So with this one, you half cock it and you just push this, as many of you already know. I won't mix up the pins here. And take out the cylinder and the bushing. I lay it over here, away from that hairy kangaroo. And you've got the same firearm. You know why? The same company made both of them, and they're both Colts. But there's, a, again, about 128, 29 years separating the manufacture of this from this. But, and I have mentioned that in several videos. I'm going to go ahead and be putting them together. But, uh, you know, I've mentioned that several times, how what's one of the cool things about these old Colts or new Colts. It, there, there are minor differences, little tweaks here and there. But they're basically the same firearm after all these years and decades. That's what's uh, that's what's neat. Oh, this one is pretty tight. It's new. There we go. It helps if you open the loading gate a little bit, and uh, you push the the pin, and it goes back in. Okay, and there you go. Uh, so you don't have the screw up here. You've got the pin that goes across, and that's what you're most familiar with. Most of you would be, and uh, this one though. You know what you have to do. On the, it's called the black powder frame. And like I say, all the, the first generation Colts up into the 1890s, and, you know, came apart this way. And, I, you know, actually, it's not a big deal. I would almost prefer all my Colts came apart this way. Sometimes that pin getting it pushed and now it gets kind of weird on you. you. You might have encountered a single action, whether it was a Colt or a clone or some other kind. And you have trouble getting that base pin out sometimes. And part of that is because they want it as tight as they can, don't want it to be too loose. And boy, if you get it dirty or get the cylinder turned in a certain position, sometimes it's hard to get it out. Uh, well, this way, the base pin, I guess, theoretically can be a little bit looser because this pin is definitely going to hold it. So, like that back up. So, I, you know, it's still, I, I know some of you are, are uh, impressed or as uh, amazed almost firearms this old you know still operating you know uh, it's just so neat because these things in a way have a reputation for being a little bit fragile by today's standards because they use leaf springs and everything but i i don't have much trouble with them i never have uh had much trouble with them trigger springs uh main springs or anything you watch today i'll break one right here in the video and it'll quit working and who knows you know with the age of this thing so now i've got him loaded now i've got a fire black powder in it and uh I don't, I don't have, I don't load black powder in 4440 cartridges. I never have, and I don't ever plan to. So I had to, to buy some of those because I'm not going to shoot it very much anyway. So I'm not going to gear up, you know, to do. So, oh man, all that being said, you know, it's a happy day when I have a Colt single action in my hand. I don't care if it is called a Colt Frontier six shooter. It's a happy day. So these are the black powder rounds. Hope they don't have too much hair on them here to the chamber. I'm going to take a few shots and get this thing filthy. <laughs> There's a lot of hair on it there. We might have made a mistake, John, putting that kangaroo <laughs> thing down there. We'll see. The tolerances aren't too close, so it should uh, operate okay. Especially if it'll operate all that black powder residue you're going to see. So take a good look at it. It's the last time you're going to see it, that nice patina and beautiful gunmetal. Okay. You know when you buy a car or you get something that's one of the popular colors is gunmetal gray. Well, guess where that comes from, okay? All right, I even got my uh, El Paso's saddlery rig out here. This is the holster. This is my Davy holster, as I call it, for the uh, three consecutive serial number uh, Colts. But this is a seven and a half inch barrel. Fits beautifully. Like I say, they just haven't changed them much. Now, once I get it all shot up and dirty and filthy, maybe I won't put it in the holster. Uh, okay. All right, what should we shoot? I got rags here, clean my hands and, and all that. And just by the way, most of the cowboys back in the day that wore rigs like this, because this is a pretty authentic rig, they also wore shorts and uh, sneakers like I wear. All right, let's shoot something. This one prints just a little high, but the windage seems pretty good. So let's shoot the stop sign, or at it. Boom! <laughs> I love it. I love it. Let's try that two liter there. All right. 
I might have got have touched a little steel there, shot too low. <laughs> try that uh, target right there. Boy, look at that smoke. <laughs> oh, it's going to hover because it is uh, kind of sultry and humid right now. <laughs> Let's go ahead and smoke some pot. How could you ever tell if it smoked? <laughs> wow. I think I have one more round. <laughs> you know what I could do? <laughs> I could try to put it on the gong. I don't think I've shot this one across the hill. I haven't shot it much at all. Let's put one on the new gong. This is the new gong. Or try to. The problem is I won't be able to tell where it goes if I miss. Oh, I heard it. I heard it. Looks like I hit it. Well, I'm not sure. I think I see it hit near the bottom. That is cool. It's empty. Click. Okay. See how dirty it got? That's why I gave you that advice to take a good look at it while it was clean. Oh, man. It really smokes up. 4440. My first experience uh, with black powder in 4440. I hadn't even had experience in 4440 until about, uh, I don't know, a couple of years ago when we got those Henry rifles that were chambered in this uh, cartridge. And of course, I don't shoot black powder in those. I shoot just, you know, regular modern, uh, you know, powder in 4440 in those, as well as that rifle over there. The Model 92 is a 4440 chambering, okay? And the reason I brought those out is to educate you just a little bit if you uh, need a little education. The 4440 uh, came about in what year? Some of you know because you've seen our videos that had a little bit of educational value. The one called 1873, uh, great year, whatever it is. Well, that's the year that Winchester came out. Sorry, Federal. Sorry. Got to talk about Winchester. <laughs> Winchester came out with that cartridge in 1873. And they came out with that gun, and guess what it was chambered for? The 4440, actually the 44 uh, Winchester it was called, or 44 WCF, Winchester Centerfire. That's what WCF stood for. Now this one's in 45 Colt, so just forget that, pretend it's not. But this rifle, this is a reproduction. When it was new, uh, the originals, it was introduced in 4440. 44 caliber, okay, and then uh, 1892 when they came out with uh, the 1892 Winchester and now that one is original uh, It was uh, one of the key chamberings top chamberings was was 4440 Actually 44 Winchester centerfire. Yeah, look on there See and this one was made in 19. What was it? 23 and see it says 44 WCF Stands for Winchester centerfire and that is the 4440 cartridge. Okay, so you know, up until I guess the 44 Special came around, there really weren't, uh, I don't know, were any other 44s really that were, were centerfire cartridges? I can't think of any. Uh, but uh, so when you said 44, this, this is the round you meant, okay? Up until, you know, the 44 Special, and I think it was around the turn of the century, 1902 or something, I forget the exact date on it. So 4440 is the cartridge. All right, so whenever you, if you see any old guns that says 44 WCF, this is it, 4440. And it's interesting uh, why that is. There's different names for it. Uh, you know, Winchester came out with that. And then uh, UMC started making uh, rounds in that, uh, uh, you know, chambering. Uh, another uh, large ammo company. So they started making it too because it became popular. And you know what they didn't want to do? <laughs> they didn't want to, they didn't want to call it the 44 Winchester because that was their competition and so they call it the 4440 because it was loaded with 40 grains of black powder you know so you end up that's where the 4440 comes from and then actually that really uh, took off and took on and, and people started calling it that to the point where Winchester eventually changed the name to 4440 on their box I think 4440 Winchester maybe but they picked that up also so that's what it's really known as you know today and for a long 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 time all right so there'll be a quiz over that one day so so be prepared all right so the 4440 big year 1873 that rifle often called the gun that won the west you know was chambered in this cartridge and of course you got even nicer velocity out of it 
So it was a it was a nice hunting round, and uh, whatever you wanted to use it for, and still is, still is. So, but you got to shoot black powder really in these old guns. Anything made before uh, ballpark before 1900s, the ballpark. You know, look at serial numbers and do a little study on that. You'll talk to people who will say, "Well, no, I just shoot really really light loads of modern powder in mine." But experts, most experts, will tell you, "Don't do that." don't do that it's old metal it's old gun and you just need they're made for black powder the metals for black powder not not modern powder much different pressure curve even if it is a light load so anyway I'm not gonna take the chance so that's what I do I shoot black and I you know I like black powder for one thing <laughs> it's a mess to clean up but the cool thing is this what you're seeing here and I hope you can appreciate that what you're seeing here is the real deal. Uh, this is a gun that was made in 1887. Uh, that's not exactly the old, old West, but 1887, you know, and uh, it's shooting the same cartridge, the same powder, the same bullet and bullet weight that was, was fired back then. Generally, they were 200 grainers. Uh, there were some 217 grainers uh, as well. All right, let's shoot something else. Let's shoot the target, put one on it or two, maybe. <laughs> this might be my concealed carry gun. I'm gonna shoot a two liter here. <laughs> Pop another one. Oh, man, feels good. Let's pop another one. I tell you, wow, 129 years, still going strong. I'll probably shoot another round. I won't overdo it, but uh, the thing is, if you're shooting black powder, you're really not, uh, you're not stretching it. The pressure is different, and it, uh, you know, it'll handle it. So it's not really decreasing the value as long as you take care of it, you know. So isn't that interesting? It is to me, hope it is to you, that those are essentially the same firearm, just a different chambering made by the same company uh just a few years separating that though hard to believe isn't it that this gun looked like that one pretty much you know when it was uh made 1887 you know it was color case hardened just like that i don't know if it was that nice you know the colt's doing a really good job these days with the color case hardening and the bluing and everything but that was you know the bluing that's what the firearm looked like now it, it probably was not shipped with these grips uh I'm going to get the letter on it. You can get write to Colt, pay some money, and I'll give you a letter and tell you who, who was in, and send you the letter indicating where and when the date that this gun was shipped, where it went to, what hard, usually it was a hardware store, and that kind of thing. Maybe I'll be lucky and this one will ship directly to Wyatt Earp or something. Uh, so those grips were probably not uh, factory. They were probably put on really soon afterward, though, is my guess. The ivory has shrunk. As I understand, it actually shrinks. They were probably because it's a pretty good fit, and they were probably fitted beautifully. And then there's just a little bit of shrinkage with with ivory, uh, you know. And I think that's one reason this gun. I was telling John, my theory is the reason it's in pretty good shape, mechanically and everything, is somebody early on put ivory grips on it. And, and even in uh, you know 1880s or 1890s, whenever they put those on there, uh, if you're putting, they were you know more expensive than wood. So somebody liked this firearm and was taking good care of it and was willing to spend the money to fit ivory grips to it and everything. And so through the years, and then once they did that, even if they traded it around five or six times, the fact that it had ivory grips added to the value. And so you just would be more likely, I guess, to, for it to end up in the hands of somebody that you know has an appreciation for fine things or for you know, a nice gun, a little bit more expensive, because it does seem to have been taken good care of. It's uh, it's a beaut. And when I, when I was cowboy shooting, I would shoot a stage, then I would run over and I would just spray down my, my gun a little bit, make sure it stayed loose. I'd even spray in the barrel with a little battle stall. That's how I got hooked on this stuff. I don't drink it, but uh, that's, that's what I did. And I never did have trouble in matches. Because uh, with black powder, it gets, gets hard and it sets up quickly. The residue in the barrel can really mess up your accuracy. It, it can do some strange things. I've shot a muzzle loader before, or not a muzzle loader, but a lever gun. A friend was out here years ago. It was a hot day, and we were shooting black powder. We shot some out of his rifle. Then we laid it down for a while, shot some other things, picked it back up. 
started shooting at the hill, could not hit an animal, and it was an accurate rifle. Couldn't hit anything. They'd shoot at one turkey, and it, it would go uh, like 20 feet up to the right or something. And he was a good shot, and I did it, and it was doing the same thing on all over the place. And it turned out that barrel was caked with the powder residue, and we like to never got it softened up. So you, know, you have that issue with black powder. Okay, so you want to keep shooting it, uh, not let it get all hardened in the barrel. And uh, just something to keep in mind, because I know a lot of you shoot a lot of black powder cartridges, right? Uh, it's a little bit of a, a pain, but you know, I don't know, it's fun occasionally. It's fun occasionally. I got these, like I said, I don't load these. I just ordered, I found the only place I know of that loads black powder cartridges and will sell them to you online, ship them to you, is, uh, what is it, Buffalo Arms. Yeah, they come in that blue box. I don't know if they even do it, but it's Buffalo, yeah, I don't even know if they're the ones who load them. I just took, trust them. You know, with black powder, again, you can't get uh, a load that's too hot generally as long as it's loaded correctly. And uh, I just buy them, because I, I won't shoot this gun, but, I don't know, you know, 20 times a year at the most or something. So I just buy when I need it. Okay. All right. Remember I load five, drop the hammer on an empty, and then shoot again. Let's go back over there. That was kind of fun. Hit the gong. I'll see if I can hit it again. Try it one handed. <laughs> smoke you can't really I'll hold a little bit lower oh, I, that did it that did it okay yeah it, it prints a little high and if something prints high the further you go the higher it's going to print aren't I a genius let's try that stop sign again weak handed <laughs> I think I have one more don't I We'll see. Oh yeah, that was one more. <laughs> Click. Oh man. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be able to fire one of these. What have I not told you about it? Uh, again, it's a Colt Single Action Army, basically. Uh, in 4440, when they brought it out, they uh, it was not for the Army, and it was in a different chambering, and that was in 1877, I understand, okay, when they chambered their Colts in this cartridge because it was becoming a popular round. And so they, uh, they just called it the Colt uh, Frontier Six Shooter because you know, it wasn't for the Army. And, uh, yeah. and also, it, uh, it was a Frontier cartridge. You had already proven itself in the 1873, and that was wildly popular, the 1873 lever gun. And so, obviously, as you've heard, and as you know yourself, you have fire, various firearms in the same chambering, it's very convenient to have a rifle and a handgun that use the same cartridge, right? So you could have this and an 1873, and then later in 1892 uh, or 1894 Winchester, chamber the same chambering. And so that's pretty common, you know, on the frontier to have handguns and rifles using the same cartridge you know and that would be pretty convenient right now the 45 colt was still the king I mean, when it came to these in terms of the number of them made they far surpass uh the other chamberings in the colts in the colts but i think 44 44 40 was second maybe uh excuse me mike uh, uh venturino mike venturino uh, but i've read all your books <laughs> i just don't remember exactly but i think it was number two and uh but anyway, that's pretty convenient, you know, to have both. 45 was a little more powerful, but the 44 was, you know, not a lot of different, right? Not a lot of difference, okay? Uh, and so you had, you know, a rifle and a handgun, used the same chambering. That was uh, really nice. Um, trying to think of anything else that I, about that cartridge. Like I say, there were some in two, 217 grains, but they kind of settled on uh, 200 for the most part. Then later, in early 1900s, after um, the 92 came out, which is a very strong lever gun, Model 92, and the Model 94, they, I guess Winchester started amping up the power factor on them. And they were going up from like maybe around 1200 feet per second up to around 1500, 
because you had a really strong action in those those lever guns. So it gave more versatility to the, the cartridge. And it, supposedly it's taken uh, as many deer as the 3030. You know, it's just, uh, it was used extensively, that cartridge, no kidding. The Frontier cartridge. So this is a beauty. I got this in Tulsa. I did some trading around. And I came home with this from the Tulsa Gun Show, the Wanamaker Gun Show, uh, this well, was it winter or spring? This is pretty early, early spring. I've had it for a while, a few months now. Uh, so it is just uh, a jewel. It, it really is. It's not one of those you can go out and shoot 500 times. You know, you're not going to buy bulk ammo for it or anything like that. But, you know, it's an antique. It's a collectible. It still works. And uh, it's a Colt single action. You know, I can call it a Colt single action. It's just not technically a Colt single action army right 4440 or 44 winchester center fire you know whatever you call it you know by any other name it's still a rose my buddy bill you know used to say that when he'd write plays and uh, i still agree with him so we appreciate you guys coming to watch and uh your support of the people who support us check out the links in the description learn what's going on go to our website uh, facebook all the stuff that we're up to uh, mainly, though, we're here shooting. Life is good. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that, because I know I sure did. While well, I've got you here, I wanted to let you guys know about our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can be certified in gunsmithing, and you can also get an associate's degree in firearms technology. And they also do a lot of work with veterans. They accept the GI Bill. They also have hands-on experience, even though it's a distance learning program. Uh, so just wanted to let you guys know about them. Also, you can find them at sdi.edu. Uh, that's the Sonoran Desert Institute. And also, uh, just want to let you guys know we have merchandise now. So if you want to uh, buy any Hickok 45 merchandise, you can go over to our store. The link is in the description of every video. And there's also a link kind of on the header of the uh, main uh, channel page, the, the, the main YouTube channel. And so we've got that. And also, if you want to find more of our content in other places, it's everywhere. Um, you can go to full30.com. We have uh, most or all of our videos over there. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45 Facebook. Um, you can find Hickok45 on Instagram. Uh, I think it's the real Hickok45 over there. And then also on Twitter, it's Hickok45. And then me, the son, the and son, John Hickok. You can find me at uh, Hickok45 and son on YouTube. I also do a podcast called Gun Culture Radio, which you can find on that YouTube channel and also on iTunes. And there's also a John Hickok Facebook page, which you can find the link to on the Hickok 45 and Son channel page. There's a link over there. And uh, that's all I can think of for now. It's a lot to digest. So you're going to want to think about that for a little bit and then watch one of these other videos that's like down there or over there somewhere because um, some of these look pretty good.